Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. I'm your host, Sean T, and today I have something extra tasty for you. And that might sound a little crazy or a little forward, but what I'm talking about is the taste of the world, literally the taste of Earth, and how you can be of service to this amazing rock that we live on. Today, I have Darren Olean. A lot of you who may be a part of Beachbody may know Darren, but if you don't, you can check him out on the Netflix documentary with Zac Efron called Down to Earth. The documentary is amazing, but what's more amazing is Darren's passion for life, Darren's passion for you, Darren's passion to connect with the earth. Listen, you are on for a really amazing journey in this episode, but I really want you to open up your heart more than your mind. I usually say conquer your mind to transform your life, but today I'm asking you to open up your heart so that you can take in everything that he has to say and that you feel it in the best way. Get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say it again. No, no. Uh-huh. What's up? You're better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Darren, what's up? What's up, Sean? Oh my god, I think the last time I saw you was in a summit picture line. That was it, like that was the it. La- last year. I uh, know. How, how different is the world since we saw each other? <laughs> well, the world is different, but for some reason, I don't know, I just have this innate ability to make it, I don't want to say normal, just to kind of be flexible. Mm-hmm. I think that's what kind of just ruins people is when they can't just adjust. Yeah. Because it's, no pun intended, because I didn't plan to talk about this, but it's the earth, man. Like, it is, for some reason, whether it's some people have, you know, whether it's created by a human or a dog or a plant or whatever, we all come from the earth. And so there has to be some kind of adjustment made in order for us to continue to thrive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Where where was it from? You can run down that rabbit hole and you're probably never going to find an answer that's truthful at this point. But the truth is, we are, we're all pivoting, we're all affected, and it's like, really now what are we going to do, right? And Yeah, I think that, um, you know it's so funny? I try not to answer that question, I just try to like live... Yeah. Every day, kind of like, not like I did before, but I would wake, when this wasn't happening, I was waking up just trying to make it a great day. And so, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I, I, you know, and plus you try to stay away from, you try as best you can to stay away from the politics of it all so that you can just, yeah. you know, thrive in the space that you're meant to thrive in. Yeah. But anyway, speaking of Earth, man. You know, I, I know I'm sure a lot of people want to talk to you about the podcast and like I'm maybe I have some questions about that a little bit, but my <laughs> questions are more my questions are more directed toward your your actual brain because mm-hmm. not a lot of people can connect to what you do and how you feel and the way you respond and even in in the documentary how you even get emotional. Some people throw away their emotions even if they're feeling them at a really high level mm-hmm. and even when it comes to me and exercise, I care less about the abs and more about, you know, how are you feeling after you finish this amazing thing? So my first question to you is, when is it or do you have a defining moment when you realize you connected to the earth at a really high level? When it when you just were kind of like this thing is massive and big and it means more than just what we do every day. Dude. Great question. Wow. Um, beautiful question. Um, uh, I think that certainly that childlike wonder and just when I grew up, it was outside barefoot rolling around out all day. That was unconscious. That was connected. That was 
something that I never set out and really could grok the magnitude or the beauty or my relationship with it. So I think, I have to think that I was 20 years old and Mm. going through challenges and breakups and pain and the first realization that someone completely lied to me and deceived me and the the Minnesota kid in me that was like oh yeah we don't we don't lie you know we just we're <laughs> we're good people you know yeah, and yeah. <laughs> um and so that was just i couldn't get my head around someone like lying to me and deceiving me and so when that happened, I really started asking questions of like my place in the universe. And it was that first metaphysical dive that I was taking. I was in Colorado, I was in Boulder, I was riding my motorcycle around the mountains. Um, and, you know, I was what, 24? Um, and it was just these several moments, literally, where this presence of my relationship with the earth with everything the mystery that i don't know but i know that there's some innate fabric of light and connection and beauty and organization and it was just that and this was drug free by the way this was, <laughs> this thanks was, for clarifying but i actually did not think they were <laughs> external you, substances involved <laughs> you, you gotta clarify yourself these you days do. because there's so many people running down the you know the ayahuasca train or whatever and uh and it was that moment which then set off a trajectory of me um kind of living that consciously and and doing everything i can and it still unfolds right life kind of hits you and and wakes you up and the other the next opportunity and so it was kind of those moments and i think one in particular i was on my motorcycle i was crying i was journaling i was by myself i was by a river i was in the the rocky mountains and i was just journaling like literally like directly asking questions of Mm -hmm. my creator and and it just like it it like that energy just fell into me and I had the biggest smile on my face. I felt everything. I saw people I was passing by and then I got on my motorcycle. Like I just started weeping and, and smiling and crying and, and just utterly grateful for, and so that just, that journey just opened me up and I never looked back since. And so so as you know, I continue to roll in this world. It's um, it's always an opening. It's always a you know that 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 you know we get the challenges. Obviously, if anyone saw the show, the Netflix show, you know, I got a massive wallop at the end, and it's that muscle that I've been cultivating and that understanding in my relationship to this kaleidoscopic magnetic beautiful interaction that we get that I pulled on those parts to get me through the pain and realize that um, after the grief and after the stuff there was just another layer of infinite opportunity um, so so yeah, I think that was pretty probably the most conscious coming together in that moment, 24 years old, um, that set me off on a forever curious of this this <laughs> this interaction, dude. I mean, it's like it's crazy. <laughs> so thank thank you for asking me that question because it gets me giddy right now. So when. When is when was the first time you felt like you dissected the earth? And, you know, in science class, we we know dissecting to be, you know, opening up a cadaver of some sort. 
And I know in the Netflix show, one of the things you do when you go to a different country, a different continent, you like to take your shoes off and connect to the ground. And I think that is like so amazing and really profound, actually. But do you remember the first time you actually literally, you know, dug deeper into what it is that you were feeling in terms of your connection to the earth? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a few years after that moment where I was actually in Colorado, in Boulder, and another pain pain moment, and uh, I got introduced to this uh, this Native American group um, that were doing ceremony. Um, again, no drugs, uh, but but traditional Lakota. Um, um, an EP sweating ceremonies and things like that. So I showed up learning the tradition and going in, doing the sweat lodge and, and, and literally, literally sitting on the earth um, and as the heat's coming in and the spirits are flying around and the intensity is there and you're praying and just that the earth is just giving you that that strength and that cooling actually is very physical side of it because the earth is cool compared to and that kind of I mean we're talking weekend weekend after weekend after weekend and year after year after year like hundreds and hundreds of ceremonies um, and 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 learning that which I always appreciated with the Native Americans there was a very clear intention with everything like I'm going to give this tobacco. I'm going to ask the earth. I'm going to ask this plant, is it okay that I transform you, use you, um, facilitate with you? And so it was that kind of relationship that just, it was everything that I thought was right. I I just, I thought that's, that's how we should go about the reverence, the beauty, the acknowledgement of the plants, the animals, the earth, the trees, the stars, the direction, <coughs> directions, the energies. Let's acknowledge all of that. So that, again, in my now little later 20s, just started this cultivation, kind of pun intended, uh, towards just, uh, you know, this... Um, this honoring and then of course that reaches to people and and that and and that person and that and that you know my that that the superfood hunting side of me was more well may, maybe equal because about connecting to the person and to the farmer and to the gatherer and to the collector and to the forager and and then like okay how are you doing this what are you doing that's right? What are you doing that I can follow? What are you doing to, to make this situation better and help the planet, help the people and get greater things out to people? So it's, it's, it's always been that, I think. And, and, you know, that, and this is, again, thanks for the question. This is something that you're never going to get on a Beachbody Zoom call. Uh, <laughs> but but, that, but that, if, if, if that is something that I can just, even non-physically or non-communicatively, I can let people know that this is authentically my intent when I do it, um, that it, it has layers and layers to it, right? So it has, it just, you know, you're honoring the situation. Yeah, I um, think one of the things that, you, one of the questions I was going to ask you is, and this might be, I'm a very deep person in this brain of mine. I mean, a lot of people see me as like, oh, Sean T, but it's a lot going on up there. Yeah, <laughs> but I can tell. when I hear somebody like you talk about the connection and, you know, connection to people, I also hear you say, you know, you kind of follow and do what's right. Like you, like you're, you're saying, you know, this, I follow this thing that's telling me to do what's right. And... I don't know if a lot of people know what right is, you know, <laughs> in today's time. So how do you actually define what's right? 
Maybe by defining what's what's affecting people mm. or what's going to negatively affect people and having the foresight into stepping into the future and that is just energetically like if I if I pull this string to the best of my ability to understand because you don't always know you're definitely not infallible like right. I've definitely pulled a string in an indigenous area with a new plant and they took it as we're going to plant all this stuff and you're going to buy it all and that's mm. not what I said but that's what they heard and and Jesus Christ like so now I'm responsible for so, for for many of these things so you know I think that obviously life gives you information all the time and you mess up and you um don't do things right all the time and taking that information in and learning from it clearly um, is vital, but you know, um, we all have a moral compass mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe through experience, maybe through exposure, maybe through a deeper sense of yourself and empathy and love and caring, you, you maybe get to crack that door open a little more to see more of the things that may or may not happen. Now, something extremely important is if you have an idea of what you think it should be, man, you're setting yourself up to get this, this shit slapped out of you. Mm. And certainly walking into another culture, walking into a situation where I'm, you know, I'm sticking out like a, like a, like, like, yes, you know you what? I'm just, like I, I am that you know, so in one, st in one respect, they, they're also impressing upon on me four different things, like to take their things away, to pay more for something or what, like exceptionally more for something. So I think it literally starts with showing up eye to eye, heart to heart, sit down, get to know each other, throw it all away. It's like an actor, right? So an actor prepares when the role, when it's time for the role, you've already prepared. You're just being now. You're not acting anymore. The, the beingness comes through. So at the end of the day, with the trains and the planes and the, all of the thing, what it takes for me to meet a village uh, in the middle of Western Africa, in Senegal, which, and I get the opportunity to sit around this this group of people, I tell them my intention, they tell me theirs, what do you think? Like, yeah. how can this work? Uh, what do you, like, this is what I would like. I would love this little thing, this beautiful flower or fruit to get over here so that it can nutritionally uplift and support. So how can we do that that's going to work for you guys in the way that you work? <laughs> you know, and it's literally just so I think the number one ingredient to try to answer to try to answer that question, you just got to you got to open and kind of even though you might have an intention, of course, mm -hmm. I want to see if this can happen. But in order to get there, it's it's a it's a collaboration. Yeah, it sounds like with, it's more with, of like a trifecta of communication connection and comfort zone meaning like really stepping outside of your comfort zone because if you don't do those three things you can't even accomplish you know what you're saying no nope. exactly i mean listen i you know getting the barucas out in the world we we had several meetings and one was this beautiful 30 maybe young 30s head of this this chief this head this woman that was head of this tribe <laughs> and you know if we didn't have a conversation with her like who, who are we to come in and in their village and all that stuff so we're like well we we have to talk with her like how is this possibly going to happen if we don't get connect and, mm -hmm. and so all of those ingredients are a part of it you just have to be there and 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 honestly show up and to the best of our ability we will follow up and if we mess up we will correct ourselves and 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 and, and at the same time everyone's human 
right? So, so you have these human flaws that exist within. Just because you're an indigenous person doesn't mean you're infallible to right. the the luring of a lot of money, uh, a, a future of doing business with this guy or this group that's gonna, you know, let you, you know, build three houses and like. Th- those are those are real for people, and I've seen it go really wrong, and I've seen it go really right, um, and every, and then when you add into it culture, different cultures, different countries, different histories, my God, you know. But I think probably the number one is just the connection. Like if they feel, if I'm not showing up, like wide open this shit's just not gonna happen so a lot of people out there they have an idea or they have a goal which some people like to call it and they i believe and i think we've all kind of been guilty of this at some point or another they do forget to connect to what it is that they want and they might skip to the money or they might skip to just the end goal they might if we talk weight loss terms they might skip to just i just want to get to that number And they forget the connection along the way. If you could pick three things that Mm. you took from this journey you've had of connecting to the earth, like earth, Mm. you know, for example, like one of the things may have been a documentary or whatever. What Mm. three things have you, you know, you've given back to people or to the earth that you feel were amazing for you? Mm. And then what was a, it was a tough lesson you kind of learned along the way by going after this goal. I certainly think that. Uh, in the early days of like I, I saw these plants, I saw these medicinal plants, I saw things that people have never seen before mm-hmm. and um, so I definitely had a lofty I'm going to bring them to the world and, and I'm going to do this and part of the story from before actually not being clear and not being translated clearly I got into some issues right luckily i saved myself and meaning that i you know they heard a promise and uh so they had all this these crops in the ground and 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 uh once i found that out when i i was i was freaked out and i was felt responsible um but luckily i was able to to find business i was able to formulate with some and, you know, part of the success of, you know, there's, there's, there's things in Shakeology, mm-hmm. the Yakon, the Sashinchi, the Maka, yeah. these things were very, no one knew about Yakon. It's a, it's an Incan treasure. Um, uh, no one knew of Sashinchi. Like, like it, it was a, it was a risk from that perspective. Yeah. But I was betting on this ethnobotanical, ex, ex, uh, exper- like experiential understanding of these things. I'm like, so I'm doubling down on historic use. I'm doubling down on my relationships with these people, and and my connections, and I'm praying that this this stuff can be. <laughs> The FDA is not going to slap it. And, and, you know, so, so early days, 2006, Sean, right? So 2006 was, you know, listen, Sasha Inchi is was considered by the Incas mm-hmm. gold. Like, it was revered. And so they were losing their cultural connection to the Sasha Inchi. So, so part of it was, like, I need to help. And Sasha Inchi has... I'm not saying I'm the only person that helped it, but it significantly helped Sashinchi in the marketplace. So, um, but most of that dude was naive. Like, wow. It was, it was completely, because... You're like, I really you didn't to, know. <laughs> not right. you knew, but you, you're right. taking a risk, if you will. 100%. 100%. And, and, you know, I just got hired to create this formula. No one foresaw what was going to happen mm-hmm. you know they were paying me month to month I was going to the lab i was working all this out no idea 
that all of this was going to happen. This was just a great gig that I was already kind of moving in. And they were paying me to do it. So, awesome. Um, and, you know, that, that turned out really well. Um, but there's also like a list of superfoods that I paid money for, that I imported, that, that got ruined or contaminated. And like thousands and thousands of kilos and pounds of incredible food that just got messed up and or they someone didn't buy it or it got contaminated i had no idea the import export complication so you know so much of that and you know i'll just add another one in i think i'm kind of answering your question but you know just recently actually maybe about a year ago i I was looking into kind of shifting gears from the superfood hunting. I was shifting gears. I've been in this environmental side for a long time, just not publicly talking about it. And I was looking into waste remediation of plastic to fuel, biofuel that you could literally put in your tank right now and use. Uh, Literally taking, I was in deep in, in New Mexico throwing coke bottles into this pyrolysis refining machine and seeing gasoline paraffin uh kerosene come out usable uh 102 octane like so i was so blown away by that i just kind of blew past a lot of due diligence oh (laughs) cut to find (laughs) out that the technology is real and i've come to find out there's several other companies that are doing it right but I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars on that project. Um, but it hasn't, it hasn't stopped the mission. It just was a hell of a hit, especially off of losing everything, my house and, yeah. and everything else. And I, I really was blowing past it because I was, no, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. This is part of the, me coming out of the fire and I'm going to do this. And, and it was, I was shutting off and probably still grieving, honestly. Yeah. Grieving yeah, yeah. the process of the loss, right? And, um, and, and yeah, so this is another hammer was 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 hard but um again uh that's part of the journey and i learned a lot in the process and actually now have good relationships in that space um anyway so those are a few you know let's talk about your house because a lot of people lose a lot of things in life be it a marriage um a bunch of things i just actually i don't know if you know this but i actually two days ago i i was I had a close call with death. A speedboat crashed into my Speedo. I mean, my Speedo. (laughs) My (laughs) Sea-Doo jet ski. I wasn't wearing a Speedo. Yeah, it was uh, was really, really wild. It was was wild. Did you, like, bail at the last? Did you, like, jump at the last minute? I had to actually rank right my Sea-Doo so that, or my jet ski, so that the bottom hit the boat. I looked at the very last second like this boat was behind me they didn't see me there was no way i could have seen them because they weren't coming this way they were coming from way over this way uh it was by the grace of god my grandmother watching over me somebody but i was able to yank the sea dew and the bottom hit i was like i know i just don't want the boat to hit my body and i'm like there's water and water can still hurt but it's better than cement and so I literally just boom, and I went under the boat, the sea dew capsized. Oh. The bo- it was crazy. It was crazy. Oh anyway, I had that experience, and so, and I know you had a crazy experience while you weren't at your home when it burned down. <laughs> it still causes you, you and your mind to go through some really wild things that a lot of people wouldn't be able to handle. So when you walked back up, when you were able to go back to your land and to see. What was new, for lack of a better way? How, what was the process of dealing with that, especially losing a home? Yeah, uh, grief, man. Um, many, many layers of grief. And, and so there was something, you know, something beautiful about it happening when I was so far away. Because I think if I would have been here, um, 
who knows what would have happened. Like, mm-hmm. if I would have tried to stay and, like, the, this pro, there was not a blade of grass that survived in, in as far as you could see. So the amount of heat, like, I, if there was any part of me that would have tried to survive this, I, I wouldn't have. Um, so... Um, yeah, when it happened over there, I just, I, it was so, it, it was a beyond moment. Like, you do, in, the, in the acute moment, there's no way you can comprehend it. You know, the next thing, which doesn't surpass it, but when I lost my father uh, about 16 years ago, it was, there was a voice inside me that, wherever it came from, it just said, let the grief happen, mm. any and all of it at any and all times Mm. and so I did and I would just come apart in the airport going home in the funeral whatever and I just completely allowed myself to feel and that same voice I was just letting myself feel that and at the same time I mean the show was very it was extremely authentic because I was very grateful to be on a mission based situation knowing that an environmental thing just wiped out everything I owned except a suitcase and my dog that was luckily safe Mm -hmm. Um, so so you know it's coming back and I couldn't get back on the property for a few weeks because it was the roads are still shut down and and when I came back I literally couldn't even come down yet I, so I had to turn around because there were so many trees down. So I had to literally turn around, buy uh, a, another chainsaw, and chainsaw my way back on the property. And um, it was so intense that when you look on this property and you literally can't see anything alive for as far as you can, there's not one blade of grass that's green there's not one insect there's not a bird Mm. like it is eerily silent in a black and white moon and then walking down and seeing the house was just you know you know it, it, it it's it's just levels and levels of intense grief and um and I think coming out of that, and it was weird because I would be grieving, and then the moment of kind of this, oh, this kind of clarity would pop in, like, like powerfully, mm. and then I'd be like, get excited, and then I was conflicted. So I'm like, well, I can't tell anyone I'm excited, <laughs> like, like. But then I would grieve again, right? Nice. So then I would go through another level. I, I literally don't, ha- I didn't have a pillow, like. Flying home, just these waves of like, I don't have a toothbrush. Well, I, I did have a toothbrush, but because I was with me, but I didn't have a pillow, I didn't have a bed, and I was traveling all over the place, and all I wanted was my freaking, you know what it is when you travel? You want your, yeah, <laughs> I, want, I want my bed. Yeah. I don't have it. Where am I going? Mm-hmm. I'm on the plane going, where am I going? I have no place to go. And so, so that was intense, but, but as the, the waves are just feeling, feeling, feeling these moments of just kind of blistering joy would come through and these visions of like, wow, I have an opportunity here. And, and, and then the deeper resolve started setting in. The reason I did this show the reason I have been cultivating relationships in this green space and food space and regenerative space and these massive connections that I've developed in this space of real badass people committed to doing something great. Mm-hmm. And I was realizing that I've been cultivating those relationships and hadn't really fully committed to those. I'm sitting in this, you know, I'm the superfood hunter. I wrote a book and all this stuff. But but really, it's always been this. I just hadn't been acknowledging this whole other ambassador side of the planet um, that is equal to my ambassadorship to people living a healthy life. I just want people to kick ass yes. and be great. 
I don't care that they have abs. I just want them to be great. And uh, <laughs> so, so what was occurring is like, I am going to fucking kick ass. Yes. And, and that deepening was like, I already thought, Sean, I mean, you and I, I think we can share, we have a passion, yes. right? We have, and so that passion, which I thought I had, just went bunk. Mm. It just went deeper and deeper. And, and, and I would never, ever take that back. I would let it all burn down again. Because I do not want to give up the gift that it was. And, and the gift was pleomorphic. It was infinitely greater than what I just described. Yes, I can um, really imagine. Yeah, so it was relationships and connections and friends and family and chosen family. And, and, uh, and going back to the, your first question, like, I know I can do something for the great mother earth here. I know I can. And I know that I can help in my way of helping people. So I'm just going to unstoppably do that for the rest of my life. Yeah. I'll give you one enhancement to that. You are. Not that you can. Mm -hmm. You are and you have been. And, and the journey, I think that was what's really cool is how the passion grows you know, the passion grows even with like times of struggle. So where do you live now? What is your mm -hmm. home surroundings like now? Yeah, it's a great question. I haven't really outed that question yet. A lot of people have asked, but, but so what I'm sitting in right now is this round structure that's called a yurt and I've redid the inside. So it's got um, AC and kitchen and bathroom and it's quite beautiful but this is this is my future guest house on uh -huh. the property I know where I'm going so, to stay when I come over <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> so it was interesting right so you know and I have my plans for the house and the house is just incredibly stunningly beautiful as it is sustainable and seismic and um contributive mm. um so that plan is continuing but i create i i went this direction because ultimately they the permitting and all of that stuff was painfully slow and i was for months i had to buy a tractor because the landslides were happening and making it impossible to come on here i had to kick out uh, these guys were supposed to clean my old house. I ended up getting on the tractor myself every day, all day, dirty, dirty to the core, kicking these guys off my own tractor because I could do it faster than they could. So I ended up cleaning my own loss for about a month while this thing was being um, built so I could come, run over here, answer a question, tell them what to do next, and then run back over, jump on the tractor, throw dirt around, get full of ash, and just continue. All the while, I was supposed to get temporary power from the power company, and they still, to this day, have not given it to me. Wow. So I basically said, all of you bureaucratic assholes can fuck yourself. Yes. Right, and I mean that without even judgment. But you guys right. can fuck yourself. So I, so I literally created this yurt because, as you look at it from the outside, you're like, okay, cool, it's a, it's a yurt. But you come in, it's beautiful, right? So it's got everything you need, and that gets me through. And then in terms of power, just generated my own. So I have a pow a, a, a solar field, a couple of them to to get power back on my pool. And now I'm finally where the old house is. I'm making a historic place where I'm going to regenerate the soil and make a garden out of my old footprint. Um, so, yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know, the more hammering people would make make it, the more I would just dig in. And it sounds dig like in. a... Uh 
or how, what do you, what would you call yourself? Like if you had to like, not to put a label on yourself, but you know, I'm a fitness guru. Not really. I'm a fitness motivator. Right. That's what people think right. I am. So what, what, right. what, how would you label yourself? I don't know. How would you label me? A uh, earther. Like, I don't even know. If maybe that's uh, something. You, it's like you have created an earther's playground. Mm. You know, because think about that. For people who are, I mean, people who don't, may not even be into, you know, preserving the earth, which everyone should be. But to go there and to, to learn about the things that you can do to kind of eliminate material things, right? Because when you rely on the earth, the more you rely on the earth and what it can provide, the more work you do, which the less of getting the beautiful things, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not going to say like everybody wants a beautiful house and a beautiful car and whatever, but I think that it just, and maybe not everyone could be as passionate or as inspired as you to create that, but I still think it's inspiring to do so. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's, yeah, I, you know, diversity getting hit with challenges. Okay. <laughs> like, like, Come on. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I know, I know the other side of it, you know, and, and having practiced that muscle, of just being hit with something and then and then being open because I really believe Sean nothing is happening to you mm. it's all happening for you and 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 if that is the case then I'm going to live and take those benefits because the moment there was a moment too kind of stepping back into how this all there was a moment where it was very hard. I didn't know what this land was going to do. I really didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was back, I was able to get back. I was trying to clean up. And there was nothing green. But I found and saw the first sprout, the first bud on the oak tree. And holy shit. I screamed. I cried. I literally... And you got to understand, every oak tree was sooted, like mm. deep black. And then all of a sudden, this tiny bud on the top of this. So I have trees on here that are 400 years old. Mm -hmm. And when that sprouted, I literally sprinted through the forest, touching all the trees. And it was that moment where I'm like, like this was out loud. This wasn't even inside myself. I'm like, guys... We fucking got this. If yeah. you can do it, I can fucking do it. And there was that moment that everything went boom. If you can regenerate, by God, I'm going to. And, and, and that's it. And that's the beautiful thing. You get the fuck out of the way, right? We're seeing even the, the changes in COVID, right? And the beautiful side of it is <laughs> our air is cleaner. Like there's crazy stuff that's if we kind of just take a pause and get out of our way, the planet, Gaia, Mother, Father Sky, Mother Earth will clean itself and generate itself. And like you said, you tap into that, man. That is a force and this is the understatement of the century, of the decade, of the millennial, of the existence. It's a force of nature that is so powerful, that we're so intimately connected with, that, my God, our tiny little brains trying to wrap ourselves into controlling this existence has just gotten us into a lot of problems. So going back to use the heart, use the connection, and use the mind to facilitate mm -hmm. that which is governed and dedicated by the heart. That's where we should reverse this whole thing. Not, not trying to dominate as a, as a culture, as a race, as a human. Like, we got to just fucking take a pause and learn and watch nature. Victor Schauberger, back in the 1900s, was amazing because he'd sit back and he'd observe nature. One of the greatest scientists on our known planet. 
because he'd figure out the mathematics of vortating water and what angles it was just by sitting back and letting nature give us that information. So it's, we have this information, I think, that is screaming at us. Mm. And if we would just let go a second and be open to the science of us, meaning the science of learning about who we are, then we have all that we need. And then we'll be governed by that, going back to your other question, by that morality, by that truth, that I'm not here forcing my truth, kind of the, the power versus force side of things, whereas I can be in my power, be in connection and observe and move in the direction that I'm being um, informed by. And that information is this primordial soup, this beautiful thing that we are in. You just took me on a journey of like complete understanding from the oak tree. It's like, if you can do it, so can I. Or if you can do it, if that oak tree that was literally burned to the core and was holding on by maybe a thread can find a way to sprout and to thrive, then so can we. Yeah. Then That's so it. can we. Darren, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, brother. I appreciate Let's it. Let's be in Good touch, day. man. Let's be in touch. Let's be in touch, okay? I, I'd love to. It's great just connecting with you here, for Good. sure. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. All right, brother. All right, Cheers. Bye.